We talked about reading and writing before in class, and we said how scanf and, 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 and standard input works. I'm just going to um, remind you one more time how it works. Um, give me two seconds. So standard input works like this. When you start entering information, like when any function of standard input starts, any function like scanf uh, starts getting the information from your from your keyboard, the information uh, does not come in every single time you're hitting a key on the keyboard. All the information are piled up and then comes, gets fired up into your function as soon as you hit the enter key. So essentially, the enter key is the trigger that tells to scanf to start reading. Otherwise, scanf won't do anything. All right? So um, if we want to, for example, get few information from the keyboard telling, for example, the uh, the user to enter few information about the uh, student, enter the student name, enter the subject, and enter the GPA comma separated. So one by one started enter entering this information. If we want to get these information from the input, what we write, we write a scanner for this, right? But first let's go through uh, the entering of information and see how it is. We're going to start with uh, the student's name. Let's say student name, let's say it's, it cannot be more than uh, 40 characters. So I'm going to put 40 characters over there for the name. You notice that it's, when I say 40, I write 41. Essentially, I mean one for the null. Now, when I do a scanf over here, when I say scanf, um, I want to get the name. So I'll do uh, percent %s. Sorry, so you Yes, I am. Thank you. Well, thank you, though. Please. <laughs> OK, thank you. Keep asking that because I keep forgetting. Now I'm going to say scanf, and I'm going to put name over here. So I'm going to reading it, reading it into name, all right? Using percent %s. I'm going to do the rest. But just for now, let's focus on the name, OK? And then I'm going to print that name out just to see how it's going to get printed. So I'm going to say printf percent %s again, and I'm going to put over here name, all right? So running this program, we'll see that when the information is coming in like this. So running this program, when I see the execution comes, so it actually prints, OK, presented the name, subject, yada, 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 comma separated. And uh, the, the cursor stands right over here waiting for me to enter the information. And then it's going to start the scanning. As soon as it starts the scanning, Thank you. As soon as it starts the scanning, um, I can enter the information. But when I enter, nothing goes in. If I, if I put the student's name, let's say Fred Soleil, that's the name of the, the thing, uh, the, the student that I'm entering, nothing is passed to scanf yet. I am just filling up the keyboard with characters that are supposed to be flushed into the scanf function. Okay. So essentially, the Enter key, hitting the Enter key on my keyboard, kind of notifies scanf, start reading now. OK? So as soon as I hit the Enter key, scanf starts reading. As you see, it actually went to the next one, right? So scanf starts reading and reads how it's supposed to read. It starts at the beginning and keeps going. It says what? It goes over here. Uh, uh, F, R, it reads F, R, E, D, and as soon as it reaches to space, because delimiter for percent S is white space character, it stops right over there. And the rest of the stuff remains where? No? No? Uh, yes, what kind of memory? Buffer. Buffer in what? Buffer in? That buffer is where? 
it's your keyboard buffer. Buffer essentially means a temporary piece of memory in which you hold your stuff to process later. Buffer means a temporary piece of memory that you hold stuff in it to process later. So buffer could be anything. Buffer for audio, buffer for video, buffer for CPU, buffer for buffer for keyboard in this case is the place that all the information are in there. So when I say Fred space Soleil, F-R-E-D is read into name. And if I actually look at it, I'll see that it's in there. You see? F-R-E-D, and because of the standard, it null terminates it, so at the end it puts a zero, right? And the rest of the stuff are in a keyboard. And then it's going to print whatever it, it, it put in name, so it's going to actually print Fred, and program ends. So essentially, all those things are still in keyboard, which means if a program runs after this, and wants to read something from keyboard, if it doesn't flush the keyboard, it's going to get space S-O-L-E-Y. Because I am running it in an IDE that is integrated with developing the environment, it, has, it simulates a closed place for your program to run. As soon as the execution is over, it collapses everything. So the keyboard is flushed or the memory is released, released. That's why you don't have garbage. That's why if you have memory leak and you have problem in here, your computer doesn't crash. If you have a program in here that has memory leak and critical problems, you compile them, you close Visual Studio and run them separately, they may crash your computer. But when you are running it inside Visual Studio because it's, a, it's, it's, it's created for developing this environment and creates a secure, closed place for you with memory dedicated for it, so if you do something wrong, it's not going to do anything bad for you. Are we okay with this? Yes. It's a space, yes, but it's a so space. Why, why is, uh, is it, it is not reading it. Why is it not reading it? No, no, why is the null terminator? Comes space. in. Oh, because. The space is like character. It's in array. Why, we, why the compiler thinking as First of all, it's not. OK, the compiler doesn't think it's null terminator. Let me tell you what happens, OK? Scanf starts reading. How? Percent S way. I am telling, Scanf says, I want to read. How do you want me to read it? I'm saying, read it as a string, a regular string. How is that? That rule says, when somebody is entering, it has nothing to do with C language. It says, the rule of entering a string from the, entering text from the keyboard is that, Keep reading the characters. As long as they are non-white space, read it. When you get to a place that is a white space, if it's a space, if it's tab, if it's backspace, if it's whatever, anything that is a white space, stop reading. So scanf stops reading. Now it has the string, correct? Where do you want to put it? You, it wants to put it in name. Because it wants to put it in name, it has to follow the rule of strings in C language. Put it puts the zero at the end. It means this is where the data ended. OK? Are we OK with this? Beautiful question. All right? Be OK with this? All right. So if I. Just a second. <clears throat> so essentially, that's what it means. What it means is that, please stop. Oh. Stop the execution. What it means is that if I have three scanfs written back to back, it's going to pick up the rest of the stuff as it goes through. OK? Which means now, if I have, if I actually run this program the way I did before, sorry. If I run this program the way I did before, it is going to 
get the rest of the stuff in the buffer. So it just comes down the first one, okay? And I'll put over here uh, Fred uh, D. Soleil, okay? So I put three things over there just for the heck of it. And I press that is here, okay? And now if I hit enter over here, what happens is that the first scanf picks up what? Picks up Fred, correct? The second scanf now has space D dot, right? But the rule of reading standard input as, as string is that skip first, it starts skipping all the white spaces and starts reading when a readable characters come through. So the second, so this one prints it, and the second one starts picking it up, but this one that picks up, picks up D dot. So skips that space, reads a D, reads a dot, reaches to, to space, null terminates it, puts it in name, prints it out, and the next one picks up the next one, and I have Fred D. Soleil with no spaces between because I didn't put new line in here, okay? So it just, feels, and then what remains in memory in buffer of the keyboard? Space is space here and a new line. Are we okay with this? Fantastic. All right. Why do you care? If I told you what it is, does it make any difference in your life? No. That's, it's not that I don't want to answer it, okay? Not that I don't want to answer it. There are two reasons not answering it, okay? The time that I knew what the keyboard buffer was, it was 10 years ago. So if I told you the answer, it's possible that everything's changed now, <laughs> okay? But as you see, it doesn't make any difference. You just need to know there's a buffer somewhere, okay? Um, and where it is physically, don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Ask the questions that make changes to your life. <laughs> the irrelevant questions waste your time. But seriously, I don't know. I don't know where it is. I don't know if it's, I know it's, my, it's in my computer. Where in my computer? No idea. Okay? Are we okay with this? All right. Next, now let's actually do that. Let's actually get the, get the comma separated name thingy. So I have a name. And after the name thingy, I would like to have uh, a, a number of subjects that I want to get, and then I want to get the, the, the GPA for a student. So these are the three informations I want to get from the student. All right? So what do I do? I write name. And the next one is going to be what? It's going to be a number of subjects, so that's a percent D. And the last one is a percent LF. And I'm, I'm reading name, and I'm reading number of subjects, and I'm reading uh, GPA. GPA. And my friend over there is going to explain why I have ampersand here but not here. Yes. It's not like it's like it array essentially is defined that the name is actually a pointer by itself. Because it's a pointer, it holds an address, hence I do not need to extract this address using the ampersand operator. It is already an address. Thank you very much. So name. So get ready, the next question is with you. <laughs> okay. So, so name is already uh, uh, an address. And because it's an address, I don't need to put an ampersand. Where number of subjects is an integer, I need to extract this address and give it to scanf. Otherwise, scanf doesn't know where to put it. And the same thing with the GPA. Are we OK with this? Now, if I read it like this, when the user want to pass, they want, want to actually enter the information for this, when actually I run this program, <clears throat> and I want to actually print the, uh, the results out. So I'm going to actually print it like this. I'm going to say uh, printf name percent s is that one. The number of subjects is that one. And GPA is that one. So I'm putting it one by one. I'm, I'm printing the results out. If I want to enter the information, um, 
comma separated, essentially this has to work kind of like this. It has to get the information. Actually, uh, let me let me run it run by one by line by line. So if I do it like this. Wrong one. There you go. The information I want to enter would be entered like this. So it runs, prints the message. Now one scanf is being fired over here, right? And immediately in here I want to enter. What do I want to enter? I want to enter the name of the student, the number of grades that it's getting, and what is the GPA, right? So how does it, how is it going to get? I have a scanf. First one is percent %s, correct? So it's going to pick up Homer and it's going to stop at the space. That sucks. I don't want that. Okay? I want it to read right up to the comma that I have over here. So I want it to read right up to here and stop. Correct? Remember I told you how, it, how it's done for new line. Remember that? I said if you want to read up to new line, how do you do it? So this is not going to work out. If I just execute it, you will see that it's not going to work out. So when, when I hit enter, when I hit enter, as you see, name picks up Homer and the rest of the stuff are all garbage. And from here down to here, all the information over here, all these information remain, remain in the keyboard and nothing else is picked up. So let's fix that. How do we fix that? This is how we fix it. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. There we go. I use the same thing that I use for new line. So I remove S and instead I'm going to put the equivalent for it with a change of delimiter. So percent %s is delimiter. We know it's white space characters, any type of them. Okay? I want to change that and put something else. So I'm going to say I'll remove the S and I'm going to say read up to and stop at up to that thing that caret means up to. I'm going to say comma and I'm going to stop it. So that means read the string up to comma. Correct? Now if I do something like this, what's going to happen? So and then I have a percent D and I have a percent LF. Correct? If I run this, let me just run it one more time. What's going to happen? So I'll execute and here I'm going to put the name and everything that I have and I hit enter and what happens? It starts reading H-O-M-E-R and then space and then Simpson and it keeps coming because there is no comma, right? I, it's, it's not going to stop at white, white space anymore. It's going to read and, and stop right at this location, correct? So if I look at the name over here, you will see that it's Homer Simpson. And I have null terminating character right, right at the end of the, the, the name. So it actually read the space. Are we okay with this? Now, right after this, it wants to continue reading the integer after, right? But what is the next? What is the next character here? A comma, right? It's not going to let it go. It, it crashes. It, it, it actually doesn't work. So if I look at it, you'll see I have garbage. You can fix that problem too. How can you fix it? It's pretty simple. In scanf, you can mention what to skip. So if you just write a character, as you do in printf to print, if you put a character just by itself in scanf, it means match to it and skip. So it means read up to comma, skip the comma. Read an integer and then after integer I want to put a comma, right? And skip the comma. And then read a float. Are we okay with this? Now if I run this program, you will see that if I enter the the information, I will actually get them all read perfectly because it reads it, skips it, reads it, skips it, reads it, skips it, and so on and so forth. Are we okay with this?
Are we okay one? Are we okay two? Are we okay? <laughs> yes, can we have a question? Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Uh, fantastic. No, no, no. Fantastic. Beautiful question. Let's do it. In here, I'm going to say X and X. All right? Now I'm going to run it. Uh, okay? <clears throat> now, if I put this, now in here, I have to put an X and over here I have to put an X. It means read up to, oh, and that one I, oh, sorry, that didn't work out. If I put an X over there, that, actually that's a question that uh, someone else asked. If I put an X over here, it's doomed to fail. It's impossible for it to pass. Because I'm saying read up to a comma, right? And then, so if it reads up to a comma, it stops as a comma, right? So for sure the next character is a comma, correct? So if I put, say over there, skip an X, it doesn't make sense, right? It's going to fail. So in here, I'm going to put an X. So now, one more time. Now if I put over here X and X, it means read and stop at X, skip the X, read an integer, stop as X, and read, and so on and so forth. Although. This has a little problem. What if the name of the person has an X in it? Then you are in trouble, right? That's why we put comma. <laughs> because comma essentially in English means separating things, right? So it's a natural thing. That's why comma separated values is a very usual thing in computer science. Are we okay? Are we okay with this? Okay. So if I hit enter, it reads it perfectly, but uh, we shouldn't do this. So I'm going to put this back to comma, <clears throat> comma. Are we okay? Are we okay? Now, this is all good. But it doesn't print comma. No, because I s skipped it. That's the definition of skipping, right? Skip it. <laughs> Read up to comma, skip it. Read the integer, skip the next comma, and read the flow. <clears throat> Dealing with live human beings behind the keyboard when you are getting information, especially when data is massive like that. You want to get 50, 500 student information being entered in your program. Asking it like that, it's a very difficult task. Why? Because one by one you have to ask. Make sure everything's okay. If it's not okay, like for example, if they enter the name, number of subjects, GPA, and then suddenly they realize that the name was misspelled, what can they do? You have to write a program. Your program must ask at the end of each entry, are you sure it's okay? No. Which one you want to fix? Now, it's only three. Assume that student has 50 different records. It's mind-numbing. You can't just do it. It's very difficult. Because it's very difficult, it's more logical to give a task to the person who's giving the massive data and ask them, put all the information in a file as a comma-separated value data file and give me the file. So instead of reading from keyboard like this, I can read them from file line by line. How? Like this. Where is it? Oh, here it is. OK? So instead of asking the user to enter it one by one, we're going to say, this is the rule of my uh, that the data entry file for me. First, you're going to put the name of the person. You put a comma. Then you put the number of subjects it takes, put a comma. And then the GPA, then go to new line. And keep adding the information one by one and keep going to the end. Are we okay with this? So now what I need to do is to be able to read this from the, from the file, correct? How do I do that? String input.c. This is how you do it. 
a structure is defined in standard input output called, fo called file. When you create a pointer to that structure, okay, you can ask a function to open a file on your hard drive, open a file on your hard drive, and give to you its handle. If I want to get this beautiful backpack of mine, and I want to give it to you, okay, and you want to get it from me and carry it around, the best way for you is to use this, that is its handle to carry it around. Grabbing it from here and going here is a little difficult, right? The handle is created for you so you can ca carry it around. It's the exact same thing with files. When you, you, when you have a file, you have to identify where the file is, how you want to deal with the file, and put that, all the information it ne it's, that, that the program needs into a package and tell to the thing, to, to your program, where it is. And that's exactly what you do. So what you need to do now, that structure is, uh, is refined to a file, uh, to the name file. So F-I-L-E is essentially a type created in standard input output header file. And you can say pointer. And in here, I'm going to call it whatever, data file is good. Data file. So data file is a pointer to a structure of type file. Are we okay with this? Then you call a command. That command is called fopen. In that one, you get two strings as arguments. The first string identifies where the file is and what is its name. And it follows the rules of the operating system on which your program is running which means if you are doing it on Windows and you have the file in a directory called data and then inside the directory of data you have student.txt you have to say data backslash student.txt if you are working on Linux you have to write dat, data slash student.txt because it's slash separated over here is backslash, right? So depending on how you identify what is the path of the file, you put the path of the file and the name as the first argument. But usually in our situation, the data file is right beside our executable because we are just testing and doing, learning how to program. That's why you don't need to put a path. So the very first thing that you write over here is the name of the file. So when you see they say data name of the file, it's a qualified name of a file, which means you have to put the path in front of it if it's not in the current directory, okay? You can either put a relative path or an absolute path. It doesn't make any difference. It's your choice, all right? So that's that one. So first of all, fopen opens data for data.txt, but how? Open it to do what? You want to open it to read from the file, you want to open it to write from into the file. What you want to do? In our case, we want to read from the file. Correct? So all I need to do, how do you how do, what read what letter read starts with? R. So you're gonna put over here R, which means open it, open the file data.txt and open it for reading. Now this is a little difficult to explain, but F open creates what I would call creates a structure of type file dynamically, okay? A structure of the file dynamically somewhere. And then passes its address out, okay? Because it creates it, okay, it can pass its, it, because it creates it anonymously. I can't tell you how because you, you don't, still don't know what is dynamic memory allocation. But, um, so if you have in a function, if you create a function, you can, we told you you cannot pass the, the address of a variable that inside is it, it's inside a function because when the function ends, the variable dies, its address doesn't mean anything because the variable dies. F open doesn't work that way, okay? It is an um, advanced type of coding in there that can dynamically create something, which means your, your, uh, the, the structure that it puts all the information about the file in that object that is created, that record that is created, uh, uh, it doesn't have any reference or name. It just has an address and you pass the address out. Where do you put the address? You put the address in the data file. Okay? So now data file will hold all the information that is needed to access that data.txt. What is the name of the pointer over you put over here? We don't care, you can put in anything. It's just a variable. 
What is the name of the file? It must match the file that you have on the hard disk and its location and everything. How you want to open it depends what you want to do. We want to read. That's why we are doing that. All right? Then what do you do? Scanf has a brother or a sister. F scanf. The only difference is that at the beginning of the first argument, you have to mention which file from. You can say data file. Ta-da, finished. And of course, we don't need to prompt anything because now we have a file. Because we have a file, who cares? I'm not going to actually mention. If, if, if something goes wrong, I can tell the file doesn't exist, but I don't need to prompt to anything. It's just reading it from the file. One important fact, because fopen is creating that data file dynamically, your program is not aware of its existence. So all the resources that it's occupying to put in that data file will remain orphaned if your program ends. It's not going to get back to the op it's not going to go back to operating system. It remains in your system as, lo as long as you have your computer on. If you reboot, it goes away. There is one way to actually finalize this thing, and that's when you close the file. So you open the file, and you have to make sure, you have to make sure that you close the file at the end. Now, for reading, if you don't close the file, you don't see much of a difference, other than you will see that your memory is a little less than it was before because you didn't clear the, you didn't give back the resources that you were using. OK? And oh, operating systems, they can only open certain amount of number of files, not more than that. So if your program keeps running and executing and finishing, executing and finishing, at, the, at certain moment, it would, tell, it would tell you, I cannot open the file anymore. Because you had permission to open 100 files in total, and your program opened, ran 100 times, opened it, but did not close them. So there are 100 files remaining open. OK? For reading, you won't, you won't see any difference because you're just reading from it. But if you would have write something into a file and you didn't close it, the same thing happens like your keyboard. Your keyboard, all the information is buffered, right? Writing in a file is buffered too, which means you write, 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 write into a file. If you end the program without closing, that buffer will not be flushed into the file. So the information you have written, it's possible that it won't get written to the file. Closing the file finalizes everything. So all un unwritten information into a file will actually get written into it and closed. It's essentially like any door, anything you have. You open any door, you're done, you have to close it. There is no way around it. You have to do that. Remember, that's why whenever I open a file, immediately not to forget I close it at the end, OK? So now if I run this beautiful program of mine, this is what's going to happen. So first, I'm going to go final result. Oh, stop. Control F5, there you go. So when I look at it, when I run it, immediately reads the first one that you had in a file. And this is your file, right? So it reads everything from it, and that's it. As simple as that. It reads the first line, Homer Simpson, yada, yada, yada. Are we OK with this? If I run it again, what it's going to read? Hmm? No, because you close it, everything goes back from the beginning. OK, so it keeps reading from the beginning. If you want to read the whole file, what do you have to do? Not close. No, no, not that, that, not close it. If you want to read the whole file, so how do you repeat something in C? You write a loop. Put the damn thing in a loop, OK? Also, yeah, put it in a loop. So in here, I'm going to say I open it. And then after this, I'm going to say, so I'm going to put an integer over here, integer i. And I'm going to say for i set to 0, i less than how many records did I have over there? I had eight records. So I'm going to say less than 8 and i plus plus. And now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to say that's it. 
So it's going to read it eight times. All right? Now I'm going to write, uh, execute it, and you'll see something bad happen. Uh, it actually printed everything, right? Correct? What's wrong with that output? Hmm. It was your turn. What's wrong with that output? Analyze it. Put it under a microscope. Like from the second one, like the name is it goes to new line. Yeah. What the heck? Let's analyze and walk through reading. Walk through the reading. So we have to find out why that thing is happening. It's reading everything, but why is it actually going like that? When you look at the data, so let's actually walk through it. OK. So my scanf, my scanf reads the first string and goes up to a comma. So reads Homer, goes up to comma, right? Beautiful. Then reads the integer, goes up to comma, correct? Then reads the float, and that's where it ends, correct? So it stands right over here. Loop goes, prints everything, life is beautiful. Then comes up, pumps back up, scanf goes over here, reads the string. What is the first thing it's going to read? What is the first thing it's going to read? Um, everything yeah, but what is the first letter, where first character that it reads? Huh? It's standing right over there, and here is N. What is it going to read? What is the first thing that it's going to read? No, new line. It's a new line, right? It comes to new line, correct? So it actually reads the new line, because new line is not on a delimiter anymore. Reads the new line and goes up to comma. Reads the integer, reads the float, stands over here. Reads the new line, and that's why the output that you're having actually shows a new line. It's actually printing it right. But because the first character that it's read was a new line, it reads the new line. How do I fix that problem? There are two ways. One way is do the flush thingy that you had. Remember that you had a flush? Keyboard flush thingy that you had? You can write that flush, but for file. So read character by character until you hit backslash n. All right? But because we are having a format, we are actually dictating the user to give us a file with specific format, we're going to say at the end of data there is a new line. So they're not supposed to put anything over there but one single new line, right? Because of that, I can simply go over there and say, skip a new line. Ta-da. OK? So it's going to read. Read, read, skip the new line. As a result, this is, what, this is what's going to happen. The first one is going to read. <clears throat> this goes to a screen, st string. Then the comma is bypassed. <clears throat> Three goes to the integer. Comma is bypassed. <clears throat> Float goes over there. New line is bypassed. Now stand at the beginning of the next one. And if I run this beautiful program of mine, <coughs> it reads everything perfectly now. Are we okay? Are we okay? All right. We could have written something to go to the end of the line, okay? Like write a flush thingy so we don't have to worry about it. We just write our scanf and just say go to new line <clears throat> or skip new line or read up to new line, something like that. We can't call it flush because you're not really flushing, okay? You have to say like skip the new line or um, read, go, read, to the ne read to next line or flush to next line, something like that. But I advise to you not to do that, okay? You, ha when you, you have to be as strict as possible when you're dealing with data files people creating for you. Because if, they, if you let them go away with spaces here or there, then they're going to try to go away with it everywhere. And that's the, when it's going to be a problem. There is no problem if your program crashes reading the, reading the data. You simply tell them, when I was reading it at record 5,962,000, it stopped reading, so your file is corrupted. Go fix it. OK? They're going to go to the record. They're going to say, ah, shoot, we forgot to put the new line. We had an extra space over there or something. 
So they fix it and they give it back to you. Unless your job would be to get a file that is damaged and fix it. They're going to tell you our data file is damaged. And we want to salvage as much as information that we want in this one. Then what do you do? You write the code and try to be as forgiving as possible. Try to read as much possible. And then anything that you can't read, instead of flushing, you save in another file. And you've got to say, these are the, the garbage we found in here. Go through it. Maybe you find something interesting. <laughs> All right? And you filter the thing. All right? So unless that's your job. But for data entry, depending on what is your job, demand for your data in the same way. Are we okay down to here? Let's go for a break, come back, and we're going to find out how to make this better and more things about reading from files. And please remind me to continue recording after we come back. Now, all this is good, but what if the file is not there, the file name is bad, for some reason it couldn't open, like you had it on a memory stick and the memory stick is not in a computer. The hard drive has a problem. How do you find out? if something's wrong with your file. It's pretty simple and straightforward. Because it is returning the address of the structure who has the information of the data, if anything goes wrong, it simply is gonna go, it's going to return a null address. So if there is a valid address in data file, a valid positive integer number, it means the file is open, good to go. But if that data file has zero in it, address zero is not valid. It's exactly like null terminating thing for a string. You keep reading until you hit the zero. It's the same thing over here. If this value over here is zero, it means the file could not be open, which means you can actually do something like this. So I'm going to take that prompt thingy out because we don't need it. So in here I can say if data file is equal to null, printf, could not open data file. All right? And otherwise, it means everything's OK, right? Else, <clears throat> you do that. I'm even putting the close in the else statement because if it fails to open, then I don't need to close anything, right? So I'm putting the F close in here. So if the data, so now if I actually go over here, let me just, I don't need to add that thing to resource files, but I'm just going to add it just to be able to change that name and stuff. So I'm going to add existing file over here. I'm going to call data.ta. So it's in resources. Now I'm going to rename that one. Okay, I'm going to rename it to something else. If I run this program now, it's going to tell me it could not open data file. Why? Because it tries to open data.txt. It's not there. Because it's not there, it fails and says I cannot, I cannot open data file. Now, if I fix that back to what it was, Now it's actually going to tell me what's going on. Are we okay with this? Now, not only this, I could even format the data in here in a very nice way and put it in a file so, so they can print it out. Okay? So if they want to print it out, I want to format the file in a nice way and save it somewhere else. So what I can do, I can actually create another pointer of type file and let's call it data out okay and try to open that for for so I'm gonna say data out is set to f open open of let's say output.txt and that one is gonna be open for writing Okay, so it opens that one for writing. Are we okay? Now what we need to do, we need to put all the information that we have, not only printed over there, but also printed in a file with a nice 
row and column and everything like that. So what I'm going to do, first I'm going to print in that data file. So now it's instead of print, it's fprint. Instead of print, it's fprint. So I'm going to come right before the data is being printed. I'm going to do an fprint. And I'm going to print the title. I'm going to say fprintf into data out row. I put a bar, full name, bar, subs, bar, GPA. Then I'll draw a line, put a plus, and a plus, and a plus. So give it an illusion of a table happening. OK? And then what I need to do, every single time I'm printing something over here, i got to print it properly right under those things. So how do I do that? I'll go fprintf. And in here, I'm going to print. Oh, I need to print the row. OK, remember that? i plus 1, the one that you made mistake in, in the test. Many of you, I said put the row number. They put printed i. You have to print i plus 1. User wants to see 1. So I'm going to print the row. And then after row, I want to print the full name. That is name. Then I'm going to print number of subjects. And then I'm going to print the GPA, right? These are the things that I want to print. But how do I print them? OK, for row, I need to print it in three spaces and a space after, right? So one, two, three. So I'm going to say percent in three spaces, print an integer. One space and bar. So it prints the three right down over here, passes a space, put a bar right under here. OK, then I'm going to say another space, print for me the name. I want to print a string over there, right? And the string that I have has 40 characters in length. So I'm going to put over here, in 40 spaces, print this, the, the name. In 40 spaces. But if it prints it like that, oh, let's go. Let's do it, OK? 40 spaces. Then I'm going to go space. So that's one space. I'm going to put a bar, OK? And then I'm going to print the subs over there, right? So subs, I'm going to go one space. The number of subjects cannot be more than two digits, correct? So I'm going to put percent 2 D and a space and a bar. And it goes right under here. You know that I did this last, right? That title, I did it last. I first printed this, and I saw it looks nice. Then I created the title, so it starts right at the top of that one. Usually, you create the title at the end, not at the beginning of the thing. It doesn't make sense, right? So that's that one. So I have that one. Then I'll go, I'm going to say have a space. And now I want to actually print the, uh, uh, the GPA. And GPA, I'm going to say it's going to be a GPA is uh, 3.5, right? 3.5, I need three spaces for it. So I'll put three spaces for it. Three spaces, a percent, three spaces. And then I have one after the digit decimal point. That's one. And then it's going to be LF. And then I'll go to new line. So hopefully, that's going to give me a, a nice look for everything. And then after everything is done, I'm going to f-close f -close the, the data out. All right? And when I run this program, if everything's OK, oh, it actually crashed. Good. Let's see why. Press any key to continue. I'd like to know why it crashed. Oh, why, is, why did it crash? You have to put name. Huh? Uh-huh. Thank you. I made a mistake. Instead of, instead of putting the address of data out over here, I put a string. So what happens, it goes to the address of the string and tries to convert this to where the file is. And it goes nuts, because it also doesn't know what is where, right? So I made a mistake. So data out. All right, one more time. Now it ran. I can take a look at. There you go. Open. Voila. Oops. The names are all at the right side. Don't like that. It is good to have them left justified, correct? To left justify names, what you need to do is to just put a single dash over here. It means left justified. 
Now if I run this, it executed, right? Now take a look. As soon as I click over here, it says what? It says output.txt, the file has been changed externally because I wrote it with my program, right? I open it over here. You want to reload it? Say yes. Always, I always say yes to all. So it actually reloaded. That's much better. It looks much more presentable and I, it looks like I have everything nice. I could finalize the whole thing with a nice result at the end. So I say the average. So I can actually um, end the whole thing with a line like that. All right. And a line like this. So that's that one. And now I can actually do the math in here. I can actually have something for average. Say, say I'm going to say double, double average GPA. GPA. So I'm going to set it to zero. Then I'm going to have, what else I have? I have uh, um, uh, int, int average subs, average number of subs. And I set that one to zero. Uh, actually, this one, average number of subjects, I have to make it a double. It cannot be an integer because it's not going to be correct, right? So. Now I can actually do the math over here for it and say number uh, average number of subs uh, plus equal uh, number of subs and average number GPA plus equal GPA. And after that, what do I need to do? Uh, I need to say average number of subs is set to average number of subs divided by Number of records, how many records I have, it's going to be I, correct? Because that's the number of things that it's going through, correct? And then in here, same thing. Average GPA is average GPA divided by I. And I can F printf average number of subjects per student is uh, percent, uh, so it's going to be only two digits. I'm going to say percent two. Uh, I'm going to put, I'm going to put 3.1 because, or four, uh, four point, three point, three point one is, is good. 3.1 LF and the other one is going to be uh, average number of seven, average GPA. GPA will be percent 3.1 LF new line and I'm going to go with uh, uh, average number of subjects and average number GPA and when I run this program double is incompatible with parameter what did I do why is it incompatible oh I keep forgetting to put the data, data out okay all right, that's that. Run it. See the output. Yes to all. If it's not good, we change the average number of subjects to 3.8 and 3.4 is a GPA. So, so we kind of get all the, so it, it, it's a good statistics for whoever wants to know why things are happening the way they are happening, right? Next thing, next thing uh, is to do this, oh, sorry. To do this properly because you don't know if you have eight records. What if it's 20 records? You don't know how many records I have. So how do I find out when the data ended? We go back to Scanf. Remember what Scanf returned? Do you remember what Scanf returned? Do you remember what scan of return? Do you remember what scan of return? Anybody knows what scan of returns? That's printf, number of characters that it's printing. Printf returns number of characters that it's printing. Scan of returns 
No. Shame on all of you. Okay. Scanf returns the number of successful reads. So if you have 3% signs over here, it has to return 3. It means I re return 3. Th so if it returns 2, it means only if the first and the second was successful. It failed on the third one. If it returns 1, it means the first one was successful, failed on the, these ones. If it returns 0, it means none of them were successful. If it returns minus 1, it means it hit the end of file. And it's not minus 1. It is EOF. The way you write null, capital letters, N-U-L-L, -L, and that means zero, E-O-F stands for end of file. So if scanf returns end of file, it means it hit the end of the file. Question. One, two, three steps to the wall. Okay? If I'm a person who can't see, how many steps I have to take to know there is a wall over there? You think so? Four. Because when you do three, you get right to the edge. Remember, the end of file is not hit. It's not going to be returned unless there is a read that has a failure in it. And end of file has to be hit. If you read the last record, you don't know if it's the end of the file. This mistake usually causes the programmer to have the last record twice. Because you read the last record, you process it, you go back in, you read, try to read the next one, it gives you EOF, right? You, you think that you, so, you at, and at the end of the loop, you say if it's EOF, stop. But because the values from last read, they're already there, it processes it again, as if it's, a, so if you see the last record is being read twice, it means your EOF is not being, you don't check the EOF in the processing. I'm not going to do EOF over here for me. I'm going to stop when the scanf, I'm going to stop when scanf returns anything but three. For me, it's important to get three information out of scanf. If it's not three, it means it can't read anymore. I'll stop. Okay? So either the file is corrupted or it's at the end. So I'm going to change the way I create this one. So instead of a for loop, I'm going to say over here, i is set to zero. And then in here, I'm going to say while. And in that beautiful while loop of mine, I'm just going to put my scanf. While scanf is returning 3, because I have 1%, 2%, 3% signs over there. It means it has to return 3. So while scanf is returning 3, like this, I'm not going to have the last thing happening twice. If it goes wrong, the while loop's not going to happen. If it reads it successfully, it's going to process it, so life is beautiful. Okay? And then in here, what I'm going to do, instead of having i plus 1, I'm going to make that plus plus 1, which means before you print it, add 1 to i. So i is 0, it becomes 1, 2, 3. So it actually counts the number of records read successfully, so I can actually have the information set over there properly. OK? Are we OK with this? So now, it doesn't matter how many things I have. Uh, name of Simpson characters. The there characters you. in the Simpsons include Homer Simpson. Okay, thank you. Simpson. He actually answers you. That's nice. Okay. Now, I just want to add one more thing over there. So, Jasper Bradley's good. Or, or Beardley, whatever. So, I'm going to add that one. All right, so I'm going to go to the data file. Where is the data file? And I'm going to add one more record over there. And uh, there's the two courses, and it got 4.0 over there. Okay, and we don't need the space over there, and we don't need the space. So although it's not going to make any difference, but let's do it properly. So we'll save it. Okay, now I'm going to run the program, and it should read nine records instead of eight because now it's independent to, uh, of the number of the things that it's reading. So if I go control F5 and stop that, yes to all, and it reads nine, and so on, so forth. Are we okay with this? And it's good because if you have garbage somewhere in your data, okay, 
if you have garbage somewhere in your data, it's going to read right down to that point and not more than that, which means What did it do? Oh, you actually read, I put it at the wrong place. The name became ASDF. <laughs> so you know that that happened over there. Um, anyways, how did it, how did it work? Let's, let's, let's walk through. So it actually reads this one, then says backslash and it doesn't do it. So it reads from here and it keeps going. Oh, okay, that's what happened. Yeah. Anyways, I was trying to make it fail, but I didn't. But you, you can detect what happened wrong over there. So let's put something else over here. I'm going to put over here A, OK? That should make it fail. Control F5. And yes to all. Yeah, now it reads down to the next one. So you know the sixth one was successful. You come to six, one, one, two, three, four, five, six. Ah, you see the seventh one is wrong, and you fix it. That's what I was trying to. That's the point I was trying to make, OK? Are we OK down to here? All right. Let's see what else we need to talk about. So EOF, as I was, yes, yes. Uh, so you know how you put uh, a letter on, so you go to data, yeah, yeah. OK. Now you put an A to there. What if you want to print out like number 8 and 9? Oh, what? Oh, so you want to ignore the record that had problem and do the rest. Yeah. That's what you wanted to do? Yeah. That's programming logic, OK? I'm not going to make it complicated. I'm going to explain what it, how you do it, and I'll teach the rest of the thing. If we have time, I'll, we'll do it. But let's go over here and explain. For doing that, instead of having something like this over here, OK, you create a flag. You call it done. Let me do it. Bad person, you. Int done is false, OK? So now in here, I'm going to have, I'm going to say done while not done, right? So while it's not, while not done, OK? I'm doing this, right? Now in here, I'm going to say if. That was three. It's much more difficult than, you know, uh, than you do all these. Okay. And if I were you, I would have actually said that uh, after the last thing, put a comma too, to make sure that no garbage can go after. You can do stuff like that too. But well, so make the. Remember, it's you that, is, that, that are dictating how your data file is. So you can actually say end of the data should be this and that. Anyways, so now if I do, when I do something like this, if it's equal to 3, do that. Otherwise, now in here, you have to write the code that ignores every single character to the file to the end of the things. So how do you do that? So go to next line. I'm going to call it void. Go to next line, file, FPTR. And in here, what I have to do is essentially flush, right, the information. So I'm going to say, um, I'm going to write it easily. So I'm going to say a while uh, and the get car version of uh, getting from file is called fgetc. So I'm going to say while f get c of fptr is not equal to backslash n. OK? That's it. Oh, sorry. What does this do? It reads one character from that. If it's not backslash n, it gets another one. If it's not backslash n, it keeps reading until it hits backslash n, right? So essentially, it goes to the next line. So in here, I'm going to come over there and say, I should have saved it before this. Go to next line. Go to next line. Uh, data file, okay, and probably 
you would have over here an integer bad lines set to zero so or you create another output file that only writes the, the, the number of bad files. So, so bad lines, you create a file, bad lines. One by one, you're going to add the lines. One, five, six, nine, two. So one by one, you're going to set that one uh, and write it. So, no, so I'm going to say over here, bad lines, uh, plus, plus. That says how many bad lines I had, that you can have a report at the end, and so on. So did, I, uh, did I answer the question? Again, this is all processing. Anything that you ask for it, there is no magical thing behind the scene that you can do that says, do it. You have to think and write a program for it, okay? I'm not going to save this program, okay? I'm going to, let, let me just go control A. I'm going to copy, okay? Copy this and uh, create a new one. So let me, let me just close this and not save it. So I'm just going to add a new... Project? What did I do? Uh, what a new file! New new file. Uh, let's do it over here. Okay, I'm I'm pasting that information. I'm gonna finalize it and post it. Okay, I put it somewhere else here. I put it somewhere else over here. I'm gonna uh, do it, uh, uh, add it later. So let me just save that. Save as. I'm gonna say. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to call it um, uh, read with error check. Let's see, I'll fix that later. All right? So back to what I wanted to talk about. So this is what we had before. Now, another thing. I did not check over here to see if the data out was open successfully or not. Okay? If there are two ways of doing this, either have separate if statement for it and nest everything, or just put it in here, but then you will not be specific to what fails. So I can over here say data file is equal to null or data out being equal to null. But this essentially creates a bug. So in here, this essentially creates a bug. Can anybody tell me what is the bug in here now? When I have, I'm going to make it smaller so you can see the whole code. So what's going to be the bug in here? I just said, I just said, if data out is null, say could not open data file and get out. What is the bug in here? Think about it for a second. Okay, the bug is, let's say it fails opening the data file. So data.txt cannot open, right? But it opens the output.txt, right? So as a result, it's got to pray it could not open the file and will not close anything. So one file remains closed, oh, it remains open. It opens it, that didn't fail, one of them failed, right? So one file remains, or if it cannot open output.txt because your disk is write protected, and because it's write protected, it fails to open it, and now the data file that is open for read successfully will not get closed. Whenever you have stuff like this, you have to bring your f close statements right down to the uh, to a separate thing and have an if statement of its own. So say if data file, close data file, if data out, close data out. Why didn't I say not equal null? So if data file is not null, I should close it, correct? If it is null, I should not. We said in C language, what is true? What is true in C language? Anything but zero, correct? Anything but zero is true. 
So if data file is pointing to somewhere, it's non-zero. Because it's non-zero, it's true, it's going to close it. But if it fails up there, it's going to put zero in it. It's going to put null in it. So if it's null, it's not going to close anything. Ta-da! So that's, that, that's going to fix the problem. All right? Another thing that I need to mention, I'm going to bring it up in here. Uh, not the Simpsons character, but something else. Is closing. These are the ones. So scanf in standard input output in file IO is f scanf with the file pointer, right? Printf is f printf with file pointer. Get character that gets one thing is f get c with file pointer. Works exactly the same. The difference is that if this returns EOF, it means it went past the last character in the file. Okay? Put character, the same thing. Put CH, you get the CH over here, and uh, the file in which it was write into. And it writes it into the file. It returns EOF if the file cannot be written into. And, uh, either you pass your coda or the disk is full or something like that. When it cannot write anymore, it's going to rent, send, send you EOF. Are we OK with this? Are we OK? Any questions? Questions? No questions? Actually, yeah, this is easier like this. Hmm. Or let me do page. Can I rip page? It's going to take time. I'll give you one. All right. Write your names on it. Any questions down to here? I'm going to give you five minutes to write something for me, yeah, just for, for test. Write your names on it. If you get the question kind of right, I'll give you 3% for your final test. How about that? So I'm kind of bribing you. Yours doesn't have a uh, um, cover page. My apologies. So I'll give you 3% for your final test. I'm going to add to it. All right? Yes. You, know, you can just, <laughs> just write in your palm of your hand. <laughs> you want one with the cover? It's just a very, very short program to write, so thank you. And it's very easy, actually, to mention. Write a program that copies a file. Ta-da. So it asks for the name of a file and asks for the new name for the file, two files you need to have. It copies one into another. And Five minutes for it. It really takes five minutes. It's not difficult. It's very short, actually. And I'm not asking you to validate to see if the files exist or anything like that. As simple as possible. Let's assume everything's sane. The file exists. It's not that the file cannot get opened. I don't want any tests to be done. Make it as simple as possible. Just copy a file for me. So copy one file somewhere. You're going to ask, what is the name of the file? They're going to say, heeha.txt. What is the name of the destination? Hoohoo.txt. It's going to get heeha.txt, copy it to hoohoo.txt. And this is how you do it. Five minutes. Just letting you know the core of the program is only three lines including a closed curly bracket. So if you don't put curly bracket, it's only two lines. You can actually write this program in one line. So the user is going to enter the name? Yeah. yeah. So user enters two names. You copy one into another.
Remember, F gets C returns EOF when it reaches to the end of the file. Three minutes left. Three percent. Come on, you can do it. This is the answer for recording. Uh, two strings. Uh, read the two strings. Open to two strings as file names. Make sure they are opened. If they are not open, print the message. Read one character from the source. Write one character into the destination until you hit EOF. Close them both. And we are done. <laughs>